Hi everyone, welcome to Zoo Creates. I'm Tegan and this is Jessica. And we are very excited to make coffee filter butterflies with you today. And we're gonna talk about um, how butterfly life cycles and before we get started, we just wanted to let everybody know if you've been enjoying these craft videos, these are all crafts that we've done in our early childhood classes and camps that offer here at the zoo. So once the zoo's back open, like this summer, we will have summer camps um, running all summer long. And then this fall, we will have early childhood classes. So we encourage people to check those out on our website and um, get more information about how you can get involved in those classes here at the zoo. So Tegan, tell me about butterflies. So butterflies, unlike other babies that we know of, so maybe like a baby puppy, they don't look like the adults when they are babies. What do you call baby butterfly? So a baby butterfly is actually called a caterpillar. So they, you might think that they're a different animal, but they're actually going to turn to a butterfly someday. They turn into a butterfly. How do they do that? So after they're a caterpillar and they've eaten lots of food, and caterpillars are very hungry and they spend a lot of time eating, then they will form a chrysalis. So today in our craft, not only are we going to make a butterfly, but we're going to make the chrysalis. So this is the in-between stage between a caterpillar and a butterfly. And once they've, they go into their chrysalis, they'll start transforming into a butterfly. And eventually, they'll emerge from their chrysalis and unfold those beautiful wings into a butterfly. So, to get started, we'll start with the coffee filter part of our butterfly. So... You'll want to get your coffee filter. The reason we want to start with that because maybe some of us are using watercolors today. We'll be using markers, but if you want to use watercolors, it might turn out something like this. But we'll need some time for it to dry. So you'll want to decorate your coffee filter with beautiful colors for the wings. Let's see, I think I'm going to do some red. A lot of butterflies are brightly colored, like our monarch butterflies that we see here in Iowa. And those colors are warnings to other animals that they might be poisonous and you don't want to eat them. Where might we find some butterflies outside? So, caterpillars like to eat on leaves and other plant materials. Once they turn into a butterfly, they have a special tongue that reaches down into flowers and they can drink nectar. So most of the time we'll find butterflies flying between flowers, maybe out in a meadow or a field. Is there any way that we can attract butterflies to our house? So that's a very good question. I have a flower garden at my house. I like to plant every year for the butterflies. I especially like to plant milkweed to help out the monarch butterflies. So monarch butterflies very specifically like to eat milkweed. And it doesn't matter what kind of milkweed, they will like to eat all of that. And that's part of what makes monarch butterflies poisonous, is the contents of the milkweed plant. All right. So when All we right. get our coffee filters decorated, how should we fold these filters? All right. I'm going to leave some of this white because white is nice and beautiful as well. So I'm going to is kind of start in the middle because I want every to scrunch to the middle. So I'm going to pinch the middle and then I'm going to start squishing and folding so that it kind of purses in the middle like this. And we've got two wings on either side. Yeah, just like that. So keep pinching and crimping it towards the middle. 
kind of looks like a hair bow to start with. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then from there, once we've got that shape, use a clothespin or paper clip or anything that'll hold it in place. So maybe like, like a barrette or a bobby pin? Yes. I think a barrette would look like a beautiful body on your butterfly. What kind of animal is a butterfly? A butterfly, so we talked about, um, last time we talked about spiders and how spiders have eight legs, and butters have six legs, so that means that they are an insect. Awesome. All right. So I've got the wings, and I've got a body because of my clothespin. So from there, I might want to add some more decorations, like maybe some eyes or some more color on my clothes in so that they have a beautiful body. If you're using a paper clip, it might be really easy to add a tongue Ooh, to yes. your butterfly. Yes, so like I said, our butterflies have a long tongue-like extension on their face. They use to drink the nectar out of the flowers. So kind of like when we drink of a straw. Very similar, yes. Now, sometimes when I see butterflies, um, I notice that they have these things on the top of their head. Like almost, are those legs sticking out of their head? They are not, they're not legs. Those are the antenna. So to put some antenna on butterflies today, uh, we've got some twist ties, and we also have some pipe cleaners here. I kind of like the pipe cleaners because they're fuzzy. What do butterflies use antenna for? They use those antenna to feel around. That's kind of like their sense of smell and touch as they move around on those plants and flowers. So I've got some long antenna on this one. Are antenna unique to butterflies or can you find them on other insects as well? You can find them on other insects as well. And on other insects, it is kind of tricky to tell between the antenna and the legs. So you'll have to pay attention to when you're watching the insect, they'll move those antennas around to feel what's around them because a lot a lot of insects, they're not going to have a good sense of sight. They can feel their way around. All right. So once we've got those butterflies, then you can start working on your chrysalis. So we're going to use a paper towel roll for our chrysalis. And I'm going to start decorating. So we've got lots of different materials you can use to decorate. I've got some colored tissue paper. We've got some pieces of yarn and string. You can use those pipe cleaners. Um, a lot of you might have some Easter decorations. You might have some of that Easter grass. We've got some moss or grass clippings, some nice dried grass or straw, or this is taffeta um, and different ribbons. But for this one, I actually was using some dried leaves and some fresh leaves as well. I grabbed some Creeping Charlie leaves. So I think I'm going to keep using my natural materials a little bit here. Now, with these chrysalises, do butterflies spin these or make them? How? What is chrysalis? Can you talk about that? So a chrysalis is something that the butterfly will make for themselves, and they have to build it around their body. And once they're inside that chrysalis, it depends on the butterfly, but they'll stay there for a while while they're transforming. So some um, butterflies uh, will also use some natural materials around them to create their chrysalis. Now, the animal friend that we brought today is not a butterfly. It is not a butterfly. 
butterfly. It's not an insect either. Today, we brought a special friend, and his name is Mr. Dave, and he is a toad. He's actually called a giant Asian toad. He's pretty mm -hmm. small right now, but he will get much, much bigger. He's still very young. And the reason we brought a toad with us today is why? So we had a toad because toads and frogs have a similar type of life cycle that we can compare to a butterfly's life cycle. So like the butterfly, they do not look like the adult when they are babies. So when frogs and toads are babies, they'll be in the water and they're what we call a tadpole. So a tadpole will eventually become a frog or a toad. It's not a different animal, but once they're a tadpole, they'll be eating and as they eat, then eventually they'll turn into a toadlet or a froglet and they might look in between um, a fish and a frog. So they'll start growing some of those legs and arms as they're developing and then eventually they'll get all the body parts that an adult frog or toad needs and become a frog or toad. All right. Now we said Mr. Dave is a giant Asian toad, so he's mm -hmm. not a toad that we would find right here at home. Right. We would, but the toads that we would find right here at home, now is actually an excellent time to go out and look for those frogs and toads in your backyard because it is so wet and rainy right now. And so after a rainstorm, mm -hmm. a really great activity is to take kids outside and listen. And you can actually identify the different frogs and toads that are outside based on the songs that they sing. And so all the boy frogs and toads are outside singing so that way they can get some girlfriends right now and they can lay eggs. So we can have lots of baby tadpoles. Yes. All right, I think I've got my chrysalis all decorated. Yes, I'm about there. So I wanted to share, so I use some cotton balls to put some fluff on there. And then I also use my markers or I could have used my watercolors to add some color on top of that. So just something that you can try at home. Okay, then the next part we want is we're going to need some string or yarn or dental floss or thread, whatever you have available because we want to connect our butterfly to chrysalis. All right, could you help me set that? Oops, Oop, there we go. All right, there's one for you. realize we forgot our hole puncher. Yes, so okay. if you have a hole puncher, otherwise you can see Jessica is using some scissors, maybe even using that paper clip, the pointy part of that, something that's got a sharp end, like um, even a pen. I bet you could use a pen yes, puncture pen through. Yeah, work well too. All right. So we're gonna take that string and we're gonna go through the hole that Jessica made in our chrysalis. And I'm just going to tie it off around that edge. Okay. Are we going to see a lot of butterflies outside right now? So not quite yet. So most of the time we'll see those butterflies moving in more in the summer months, but they can start moving this way in the process of becoming Coming butterflies, but it might be more caterpillars that would be coming out at this time of year. All right. So I've got the string attached to the chrysalis, and then I'm going to grab my butterfly. And what's nice about the clothespins is they've got that spring that you can thread this through. But with the paper clip, you can loop it through one end. This string isn't exactly essential to this craft, but it helps keep the two pieces together so they right. don't get lost, especially when kids are playing with them. Right. 
Alright. Yes, and another thing, so I use string, but you could also use some of the ribbon maybe that you use to decorate your um, presents, mm -hmm. um, any craft lace that you would have. Or dental or, floss. Or, or the dental floss, yes. That works well. That works well. Okay, so here, so when they're inside the chrysalis, they can't have these beautiful wings stretched out, so we're going to have to fold their wings in for them in order to fit into their chrysalis, like so. And then even that extra string can go inside so that you can't tell what's going on in there. And then when he's ready to out, be a butterfly. Yes. Emer emerge. Emerge. Be close. Yes. And become a beautiful butterfly. Very nice. Oh, I like it so much. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us today for Zoo Creates, and we look forward to seeing you all on Friday. Bye. Bye.